Hello everybody, so we're going to uh, just quickly run through adding uh, an Unreal en Engine project into Bitbucket. So I've got this Unreal Engine C++ project that I'm going to start. I'm just going to use the Twin6 Studio sure template, but basically you'll have a project already created, so I'm just going to create one now. Wait until the Visual Studio loads up. You'll see I've got um, I've got Bitbucket up in the background. So we've got our project set up, and so if we go to here, SC example project. So this is the directory that we want to add to Source Control, essentially. Uh, yeah, it's just building some files up while it's doing that. Okay, we're sorted. So what we want to do is we want to um, initially we want to sort of create a local um, repository for that folder. Where are we? Yeah, for this folder here. Um, so we're going to use source tree to create a local git repository for the di this directory and then we're going to um, create the same thing in bu Bitbucket which hosts the sort of remote repository so we're going to create our local one on our client machine and then we're going to upload it into Bitbucket so that other people can get the same thing and when when that's in Bitbucket obviously all of your other team members or other people can download that repository and work with it. So um, you can just give them a link to that one and they can clone it and those kind of things. So what we want to do is we want to add files using source tree. So my, my source tree already has the um, password and stuff for, uh, for using Bitbucket associated with it. So what we can do is we can create a new repository and make sure you select the git repository and um, so you want to browse to the project file uh, which select the project and we'll call this SCA example project for now it doesn't really matter what we're calling it so basically we're browsing to the folder the top level folder where our git repository is going to be made so this is creating a local repository it's essentially adding um, the git directory if you see that uh, if we go to that project there's no git folder right now if I then go create And what that's done is it's created this dot git. Basically, git stores some sort of hidden files in that directory to tell it which, uh, and it stores the version histories in there. So we've got this project, and we need to then commit the project. So it's got a bunch of what it's called unstaged files, files it doesn't know about. So the question is, um, what do we add into the project? So I prefer to use the tree view for this and if we go to the project folder itself so just to explain what each folder does um, intermediate files is something that's used while you're building things so you don't want that in the, the repository source is your source code if you're using C++ so that's definitely something you want in there content is the actual game content itself so all your VU assets um, you probably want that in and config is your local configuration, so like your editor configuration, your defaults and those kind of things. So you don't want that in either. What I like to do is also create a folder uh, source art um, and just add that in if I got some art files to add in there as well. So what we need to do is in source tree, we need to actually select which files should go in to the repository so if we go to the tree view 
we can add the content folder and we can add the um, source folder. One thing we don't want to do is we don't want to add the SLA and SDF open yeast. So we want the U project file because that's the sort of Unreal Engine um, project settings file. And if you right click on that, you can always recreate all of these other solution files and stuff. So we don't want the defaults in because that's per user and you'll create each one of these when you open the project. So if we go to commit, what it'll do is it'll open a window um, prompting us for a commit message. So I'll put something like oh, commit in there and commit it. And what that's done is that's created a repository because this is a distributed system it's created a repository on our local machine now that's all right if we're only ever using one machine right but we actually want to share this with other people so what we actually need to do is we need to um create an, a sort of remote repository and then we need to actually kind of send all of our data to that report remote repository um so let's go to our bitbucket account and let's create a new repository and let's call this uh example repo um source code example repository I could create it private, I'll create it not private. It's a git repository because we created it as git. We can add issue tracking in the wiki and those kind of things. So if we quick create repository on here. Um, so it's, it creates an empty repository, right? So we need to put something in it. And the way to do that is if you go to, I have an existing project, it gives you a command line to sort of use. And the easiest way to do this is to copy that um, command or use these commands. So I'll copy that one first and then I'm going to go to source tree and open a terminal. So this is the git terminal. And so, so git basically gives you a bunch of um, commands you can use and if we go to edit paste this is one of the um git commands so basically git is the the executable we're going to run remote add origin is the command we're going to use and then this is the the name of the git repository that we're going to add the stuff into so if we run that it comes back silent which is all right um so we've added uh, a repo, a git sort of file, but now we need to push our content to it. So if we go back to the, um, the commands, so we need git push minus u origin. So we can just again, copy that, edit, paste, now, one thing it's going to do is it's going to add, ask you for your password. Um, you need to make sure that your password, um, that you remember your password for Git, essentially. So, um, we're just going to copy my password because I have weird passwords that I don't remember. And then it sends all of your objects. So basically everything that you've committed to your local repository will then get pushed to the external repository, which in this case is on Bitbucket. Uh, you could do the same thing with um, GitHub. I would imagine you might have to do some things slightly differently. Um, but because we're using Bitbucket, I'm just giving you an example for this. Um, the git commands obviously would be the same. It's just things like um, whether it prompts you for a password and those kind of things might change a little bit. 
So what we're doing is we're pushing our local content. So the things that we checked into our local repository, it gets sent to the external. Okay, and then there's one final command that we need to run. Uh, so we need, let's just type it in this time. Git push, oop, pish, push, minus u, I hope if I could type, minus u, origin, minus minus tags. So basically push any tags. And then again, we need our password. So it's useful if you remember it. Okay, so now we hit, we should have in our repositories. So let's just go to um, our example repo. We've got one branch in there. So if I go to repositories, oops, nope. Pardon me. I'm just sneezing. Right, okay, uh, I go to repositories, so uh, we get a source and we'll see that the U, U project's checked in source code is in there um, public yeah so it's it's all inside the directory so what we want to do is that say we want to change a file in this um, in the source code here so I'm just going to take a public file. Let's say we change the pawn and add an integer to it. Um, so what I want to do is when I've changed these files, I need to commit them to our local repository and then I want to um, upload them to the remote, right? So imagine I've I've done a bunch of changes locally. I want to a commit the change locally, and when I'm happy with all of the stuff working, I want to send it to the remote. So you'll notice that when I change that file, it came up with the little dot 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 thing here, which is uh, telling me that one file has changed. Uh, and in this case, it was public example porn. So we can add that to what we call staged. So this is the area where the changes that we've made should go into. And then we can call commit on that. Now, an interesting thing in the source tree client is that you can actually automatically push changes to the origin. So basically push changes to the remote repository, which is what we probably wanted to do. So let's go um, added variable. So you want decent commit messages in your um, projects so that people can tell what's changed to um, example uh, to Pawn to add choice of fire modes. So the idea is that every time you make um, a reasonable set of changes, you should commit those changes to your local repository. So, and uh, every now and then you should push them up to the remote repository as well. So it allows you to do sort of small edits and stuff. Um, check them to make sure that they're working and then push them so you can either do the push thing or we can just when we're committing the change push changes immediately to origin so let's commit that spend some time committing okay so now our um, repository should be updated now it might take a, a few um, a few minutes for your source code project to update, just because um, you know it's the way the web works, kind of thing. But eventually, what you'll see is let's just see if I can uh, refresh it by going to the source directory source. 
and public example project pawn you'll see that it, it eventually refreshes its cache and shows up so basically there's your remote your changed file and people can obviously clone um, or fork or whatever they need to um, if you share your repository with other people they can then commit to it etc so that's how you're creating a repository with Unreal Engine and then submitting it to source code control via Bitbucket. Just remember that when you make a change, um, you need to stage it, commit it, and then tell it to push. Once you're happy with the changes, tell it to push to the remote machine, um, to the origin of the remote machine. So it even tells you what, what remotes are looking at this. So we've pushed our project up to this remote with um, the origin being on that machine so it knows that like another machine has some source code that we maybe we could pull from or push to um, it knows that we've got our local machine with the master branch um, so that's it really hopefully you'll sort of get used to the idea of editing and then committing so that you've got a history of changes um, and obviously as you're adding files you need to add them etc etc so get used to using source tree it's not a bad little client um, better than typing the command line anyway okay so I'll stop the recording there and hopefully you can uh, have a go with that